And straight ahead on the national desk, an anti-Israel resolution set to be voted on by the nation's largest teachers union that critics say could stoke anti-Semitism inside the classroom. And the National Education Association's annual meeting in Philadelphia is underway this week. And pro-Palestinian members of the organization are pushing the NEA to support boycott efforts supporting um, Israel, to boycott efforts supporting Israel and to not endorse President Biden. And join us now to discuss this and so much more as the president of Parents Defending Education, Nicole Neely. Welcome to the National Desk, Nicole. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, I've been going through this list this morning. It's quite a list. The National Education Association members will vote on 10 pro-Palestinian anti-Israel resolutions this week um, at the NEA's you know, annual meeting in Philadelphia. Um, the, some of these uh, things that they're proposing right here uh, some include educating members on the Nakba, that opposing the existence of Israel is not anti-Semitic, a call for the NEA to basically align itself with the BDS movement, which is boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel. There's so many here. You have 34 on the list to uh, not unendorse Biden. Do you think this is crossing the line? This is crossing the line, but it is also very characteristic of the NEA. Um, let's think back to in 2019 when they actually voted down a resolution to rededicate their focus to student learning. And so that's where the unit's priorities are. Over the past several years, there's been resolutions on Ukraine, on Palestine, on abortion, on all kinds of foreign affairs things. And so I think this really serves to underscore the fact that teachers unions care about their money and their power, and they certainly do not care about our children or educating them. What do you think parents think? Because you're obviously you talk to parents, you interact with parents when they hear something like this, when they see a list like this one. I think it's appalling because, again, it really shows that they don't care about our children. This is an union that last year had um, $389 million in revenue. Um, and so these are things that are spent on those kinds of priorities, those kinds of programming. Um, last year, they voted to investigate parents and parent organizations that oppose their LGBT priorities. The year before that, it was voting to investigate parents and parent organizations that opposed critical race theory in the classroom, which we were told at the time was also not being taught. And so I think it really shows that their eye is on everything except for education, which is really what we want our teachers to be doing. And for good teachers who do care about that, those are the teachers that are being pushed to the side. This is how the union chooses to spend its finite time at this conference, and it's really a shameful. Now, we're hearing that President Biden is expected to speak at the Teachers Union, uh, the Teachers Union annual meeting on Sunday, uh, you know, and then you have this on the agenda. Biden is apparently, we know, he's walking a fine line here. Now, your parents group, does it appear that Biden is aligning himself with this agenda? Do you want him to denounce it? I don't think he'll denounce it. I think right overall, the party is in a very tough position. The fact that there are 10 resolutions being introduced on Palestinian anti-Israeli initiatives is really shocking. Last year, there were three. Um, and so the fact that this has jumped so much, I think, shows that at least some of them are likely to pass. But the resolution that calls for the union to unendorse him if he doesn't meet their list of demands includes things like they want to demilitarize the southern border. They want Israel to get rid of their apartheid walls. And so it puts on all these insane foreign policy initiative um, conditions on this. So I I don't think he'll fully acquiesce, although he has started to call for a ceasefire, which is something that when this initiative was in, uh, introduced in January of this year was something they had not done. So we are seeing the White House move in their direction. So, for you, sure. so you think some of this is working, at least the pressure they're putting on? Yes, I think, right, we've seen in the different states, the um, voting uncommitted, I think it is scaring the Democrat Party. And I think, you know, right now with him, as you alluded to, being in such a tenuous position, I think we are watching them try and throw out as many goodies to their affiliates and their constituents as possible. So I'm not surprised to see them moving towards this. Now, we're going to move on a little bit here. Uh, new state laws took effect on July 1st across the country, including in Maryland uh, and Virginia, where legacy admissions for universities ending, legacy admissions considered uh, action in elite college admissions has come under scrutiny. I mean, a lot of uh, schools are moving away from this after the Supreme Court, you know, struck down race-based affirmative action. What do you think of this move? I think it's interesting. It's actually, it's something that um, is being done under the guise of equity, but I, I actually don't think it's a terrible initiative. Um, this is something that, um, fine, you know, it, if you look at who has gone to college historically, who will go to college, it probably does open up some seats. Um, this is something that personally I support because when I used to run a campus free speech group, free speech group, I actually had sued both my alma mater and my husband's alma mater. So my kids are not welcome at our schools anymore. I'm almost tempted um, to ask you, where'd you go? But I, 
um, University of Illinois and University of Texas. So, um, but you know, but I do think it's time to change it up. As long as we're not discriminating against students on the basis of skin color, I say, you know, open it up and let the most deserving students get earn their place. So what do you think? Do you think this is going to have any impact overall? And do you see, I mean, we're talking about a few universities right here. Do you see this uh, maybe spreading to more college campuses? I think it will start to spread. Um, although, you know, universities are also balancing that pressure of, okay, well, the legacy admits are sometimes the ones that make the very, very big six, seven, eight, nine figure yep. gifts. And so, um, you know, this, this will, for some colleges, be a business decision at the end of the day. Well, thank you so much, President of Parents Defending Education, Nicole Neely. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.